Okay, uh, welcome. Sorry, I'm a, a little bit late starting. Uh, we have some demo. We have some equipment up here. You might not have noticed it. Uh, we're going to do some angular momentum demonstrations up here, and then we're going to have some clicker questions about the demonstration. And we're going to need some volunteers from the audience. Somebody with short hair and that's not wearing a scarf or anything like that. Because you're going to be using a bicycle wheel and you don't want, you know, your long hair getting caught or your shirt, you know, getting caught in the bicycle wheel. All right. Anyways, we'll get to that in just a few minutes. I have uh, to start. I have some comments uh, concerning exam two. Now, the procedure is the same for exam two. You must bring your eye clicker. You must, you know what? Bring your ID card so you can bubble in your PID. It's on your ID card. That's your UCF ID number. Also, you got to bubble in the test form on the Scantron, which a couple students did not, and uh, they don't get to get a, a PDF uh, of their results. You must, so Scantron calculator, pencil and eraser, make sure it's a good eraser. Uh, you may not use your cell phone. Eye clicker, yes. And the general format is going to be mm, two or three eye clicker questions, which may or may not be um, uh, calculations, uh, major calculations. And we got a, a lot of different kinds of calculations that I can ask you about. So just be ready for, be ready for anything. SI schedule on Monday. Now this is the same SI schedule. It's up here every morning. By the way, my office hours are up here every morning as well. Uh, Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So, uh, so I think some of you guys are still uh, a little bit mystified by office hours. Here's SI. Now Monday, she's, she's not going to have a, a, a exam one review per se from 3.30 to 5 like last time, but she's going to have the regular SI session at 3.30. So uh, get there and she'll dismiss at 4.20 uh, her norm, normal time. And some kind of a schedule uh, mess up. I'm not sure exactly what uh, but you can ask uh, Maria about that when you see her on, on Monday. And then Tuesday we'll take the exam. So I don't know if she's going to have Tuesday sessions or not. All right. So try to get to that if you can. Uh, and as I always say, um, try to find somebody to study with. Somebody that you trust and it's not a total slacker and stuff like that. Because um, studying with another person really helps. Okay, topics. Uh, chapter 3, 5, Uniform Circular Motion. Uh, we talked about that right after exam one. Um, and we talked about universal gravitation, uh, chapter 3.8 to 3.13. Um, so that'll be on ex exam two. Uh, all of chapter four, so that's interactions uh, so boxcars, uh, molecules like this, remember this one? This is basically two boxcars, or this is basically one boxcar slamming into five boxcars. Although it looks like a cell, it's the same philosophy. Five identical boxcars. Uh, kinetic energy, all that stuff. Uh, chapter five, we're going to finish today. Um, and including the ice skater effect. So uh, that's the basic chapter coverage. Um, study everything, you know, study like mad. It's going to be just for the coverage of all the different kinds of calculations that we've tackled. I mean, think about it. Uh, you know, gravitational, circular motion, Box cars, collisions, uh, kinetic energy, free fall tape. So study everything you've got. So starting with lectures in YouTube. All right. Uh, also, the clicking questions from lecture 
Make sure you review those. I mean, if, you, if I have them in, in lecture, I consider them important enough um, to include in lecture. And therefore, it might be important enough to ask maybe not the verbatim question, but a similar question on exam two. All right, so uh, same with mini reviews in Great River. By the way, the chapter five mini review, um, I don't think it's cooking yet, but I'm gonna try to get it activated this afternoon. Call it. Yeah, chapter four, you're going to have three, four, and five to study for this exam. And matter of fact, you can go back and look at chapter, I think you can look at your old attempts in chapter two. Uh, has anybody done chapter four yet? Chapter four mini review? Okay, good. Uh, and I'll try to get chapter five mini review operating. And uh, Colin, I'll put the assignment in web courses uh, so you have it. I, it just creates a call, it just creates a new row in the grades page, so. Uh, I'll be doing that. Uh, also important is all the homework that we've done in web courses. And we're going to have some, you're, you're going to have uh, a bunch of mini reviews in Great River. And also you're going to have a mega review homework uh, in web courses. Well, maybe not a mega review, maybe just a, it won't be a mini review. It'll be bigger than a mini review but smaller than a mega review. So like kind of a regular review assignment, uh, plus some angular momentum stuff in web courses. We have a talking PDF, the, the free fall table, which I know at least one student has worked out and seen the patterns. Uh, so discussions, people are talking about this and that in discussions. And be a mensch and help your classmates do not give them the freebie answers, though. But definitely coach them along the way if they, if, if they appear to be flailing. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to uh, help them out. Okay, questions about anything on this page? Yes, in the back. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Repeat that slower and more clearly. I'm sorry. Is it going to be like exam one where we have to memorize all this? No! No memorizing! 39 lashes with a wet linguini for you. Memorize, you don't have to memorize, you have to recognize. So if you use the formulas, and all you got to do is, is recognize. You don't have to regurgitate them from memory. They're going to be on there. Everything that you need. All right. So, no. But <laughs> you'll have the matching, you know, so a strategic. So it might be a few more. It might be five or six matching, you know, formula matching. And then I might give you concept matching as well. So, that, you know, but I haven't written the test. I'll write the test over the weekend. But no, I can't believe you said that. No, no memorization. Just recognizing that's all you got to do. All right. Another question? Okay. Uh, we're going to have the special seating chart again, uh, and here here it is. Just you know, you can. The faster you get a spot, the faster we'll start. The more time you'll have for the exam itself. All right. So the very front row, keep it empty. But then, okay, young lady, here in the second row, can you raise your hand? Okay, that's the second row. Okay. Now the ninth row is. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, uh, you with the gray hoodie in, on the aisle, yeah. Can you tell the girl in back of you to raise her hand? Yeah. 
Yeah, what's your name? So, Zoe, stand up. You're kind of tiny. Okay, so Zoe's in the ninth row. Okay, so row two through. And just, and there'll be enough spaces for every other seat. You know, there'll be fours in each, each row over here. There'll be fives on each row over here. And I think over here, there's fours and fives over here. Okay, so every other seat. And that'll go, that'll go good. And the faster you do that, um, the faster, the quicker we get started and the more time you have. So theoretically, you could get 80 minutes for exam one. You know what? If everybody's here and seated at 8.59 a.m., I'll hand out exams at 9 and you'll have... 79 minutes, so that's not too bad. Are you in favor of that? Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, so, all right. So, questions about seating charts and stuff. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, last time we talked about angular velocity and the right-hand rule. I'm going to give you a, a right-hand rule clicker question in a second. And we, we finished the day looking at the Orlando eye. And if you look at it from the west and looking toward the east, it moves in a clockwise manner. So you would represent that the angular momentum arrow uh, and you're, you're usually you need three dimensions, and unfortunately, paper is only two-dimensional. So if you don't do perspective sketches, and you make your circle in the plane of the paper or in the plane of the projector screen here, you have to use a symbol for something going into the screen, and that's the X, okay? So it's going into the screen, and that's by using the right hand rule. Okay, call it. Question. Um, by into the screen, do you mean toward the X or toward the center? Into the screen? That means, in, that means, yeah, this into the screen. This is out of the screen toward you. Okay, so your hand, your right hand, you know, is, and you know, I'll, I'll just tell you a story uh, from grad school. I was, in grad school, you have to qualify for um, each step of each degree that you aspire, for which you aspire, or to which you aspire. So you have, at, at least where I went, Montana State, we had a, a qualifying exam, and then we had a PhD written exam. So the qualifying exam um, qualified you for a master's degree, and if you passed it at a high enough level, you could t sit for the PhD written exam uh, a year later. And so, uh, so I was studying for the qualifying exam and they, they give it during spring break of your first year in grad school. And so from the beginning in the fall and all through uh, Christmas break and on into sp towards spring break, everybody's studying their, they're doing their regular classes and plus they're studying their brains out to get ready for the qualifying exam. So I, I was studying for the qualifying exam and a lot of stuff you go over is just undergraduate physics. And so I was going over this stuff and I, I, I was working on an angular momentum problem, I think. And I, I was, you know, so I'm at my desk and I'm writing the problem down and I got my, my, you know, and I got my calculator over here and I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure this out. And then it was a study, a study guide that I was using so I could look up the answer in the back. And I kept getting it wrong. And so I tried another problem and said, okay, I'll get this one right. And I kept getting, I got, you know, the book says right, I got the answer left. The book said up, I got the answer down, et cetera, et cetera. The book says an X, and I was getting the opposite. The, the other symbol coming out of the page is a circle with a dot in it, okay? And so I was just getting the opposite of what I was, 
And I realized that what I was doing was I was writing, I'm right-handed, right? And so I'm writing here and I'm doing all the right-hand rule stuff with my left hand. And so that's why everything was wrong. So don't, so if I, so this is the only time I ever help a student on an exam. If I see, I'm not looking at anybody, but if I see anybody in here going like this, you know, and stuff with their left hand, I'll say no. No memorizing and no left hand rule. You got it? He's, 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 he's. Don't look at her. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I said no memorizing on the exam and no left hand rule. Okay, so if I see anybody, I'm just getting on your case a little bit. Um, if I see anybody, I, I will. I'll tell you. No, right hand, right hand rule. Yeah. So use your right hand and just, you know, try not to dislocate your shoulder as you're doing it. Sometimes it's a little tricky, but anyways, here's another one. Here's the other side. So we, you know, the guy standing behind it, and so uh, just try to mesmerize that. And you know, look at look at the internet. I mean, there's like just type in right hand rule angular momentum or right hand rule angular velocity and you'll see it you'll see youtubes you'll see diagrams out the wazoo you know there's a good physics site that you guys it has calculus but you can still tackle some of it even though you don't have calculus like their definitions and stuff and their diagrams are really good and that's hyperphysics which is at uh, georgia state uh, up in georgia so uh, they have really good uh, stuff. I use their diagrams from time to time. Uh, so let's do um, a little bit of visualization. Let's do a clicker question. Here we go. Question one for today. And remember, if you forget your clicker on any given day and you don't bring your clicker to class, it's not a big disaster because you only have to have 85% participation to get all the clicking points 25 out of 25 all right question number one all right, so here's a merry-go-round and spins and so that yellow curved vector shows you the spin direction but now where would the angular momentum arrow be what direction so you got to use the right hand rule for that All right, and it, it's kind of tricky a little bit because this is a perspective view, but. And go ahead and vote. And, you know, I, I hardly ever tell people to uh, what's going to be on the test, but <laughs> you're going to have something like this. You had something like this on homework. You have something like this now clicking. So chances are you're going to have something like this, maybe true, false on the test. All right, uh, 10 seconds to vote. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, zero. All right, good. Um, good, most of you got that one right. Upwards towards the sky. So it's just kind of, so look at my hand. So this is my hand, I'm kind of curving it in the same sense as the, the merry-go-round. Okay, so that means my thumb is up towards the sky. All right, now we're gonna do some bicycle wheel demonstrations and I'm gonna pause the uh, lecture in YouTube and when we come back, we'll do some eye clicker questions. All right, the lecture. So what we just saw were angular momentum interactions with Katie and Khaled. And so let's 
Let's try to make sense of it with some eye clicker questions. All right, now, the next question is going to be a little bit, uh, you're going to have to read carefully. I'll just put it that way. Here it is. The moment of inertia. So there's the formula for the moment of inertia. And this is for Katie. You know, most of the moment of inertia is in Katie's body. But her body is just pretty much stable. She doesn't change it. You know, she doesn't extend her leg or anything like that, but she does extend the weights, okay? So I've broken it apart. But, you know, the, the main sum of all the MR squareds of Katie and the dumbbells splits up in this way. So most of the action is over here in the uh, dumbbell area. So go ahead and answer your... What happens to MR squared? So think carefully. So this is the second. So Katie, this is the second version when you started with your arms out and then brought them in. Fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Um, yeah, most of you got it correct. It gets, the MR, you know why MR squared gets smaller? The, the mass doesn't get smaller, but the R does. Okay, so when Katie has her arms out like this, with her wingspan, you're talking an R of almost a meter. You know, so like maybe 70 or 80 centimeters. But when she brings it in here, the dis, she still has the same arm length, but the weights are just a few centimeters from the central axis, you know, that goes down her spine and, and, and into the, you know, the, the spin axis of the chair. All right, so let's take a look at this. So, and, and so these are notes now. Okay, so with the arms out to start, time t equals t1, mr squared is larger. Okay, so she has her arms out. The MR squared of the dumbbells anyways. All right, so what that means is that the moment of inertia of the dumbbells to start is a little bit larger. And you could calculate it if you felt like it. You know, I think there were, are those five pounds? Does it say five pounds on the, the weights there? Okay, so they're five pounds. So that's like two point something kilograms times like maybe 70 centimeters quantity squared. You can figure it out. Now, the angular momentum L subscript I or L subscript 1. Now, this is just the definition. It's the, the moment of inertia I1 and the spin rate omega 1, all right? Now, after the interaction, when she dips the, the dumbbells inward, those things are going to change. Because we know that when she brings her arms in at time t, t equals t2, uh, the MR squared is going to be a little bit smaller. And that means that moment of inertia at time t2 is smaller. All right, so now we, we haven't really... 
figured out what we know that her spin rate changes though i mean she now when she brings her arms in does she does she spin faster or slower faster all right so let's figure this out so l2 the angular momentum the spin angular momentum of katie and the dumbbells is you know, whatever the moment of inertia is, a little bit smaller there, and then omega-2, the spin rate. So that's the RPMs. And she, I don't know, she had about maybe 15 RPMs going, roughly. Now, here's why she spins faster, conservation of angular momentum. And this is, if, there's, if the ball bearings are good, there's no friction uh, draining the, uh, you know, the, the speed away, you know, draining off the kinetic energy and stuff. If you have good ball bearings, L1 and L2 are going to be the same, all right? And that's kind of like in the boxcar collision, P1 and P2 were the, or PI and PF were the same. If you don't have a lot of friction on the railroad tracks and stuff like that, you know, which ideally is the case. Now, the spin rates omega-1 and omega-2, if the eyes are different, uh, Alondra, if, the, if moment of inertia 1 and moment of inertia 2 are different, then omega-1 and omega-2 have to be different. Because they have to multiply. If, if you increase I1 or decrease it, L1 has to be the same as L2. So if, if I1 is larger, omega-1 has to be smaller. If I1 is, if I2 is smaller, omega-2 has to be smaller or excuse me, omega-2 has to be larger. And that is the ice skater effect, okay? I1 times omega-1 has to multiply out to I2 times omega-2. So if I1 and, o and I2 are different sizes, omega-1 and omega-2 are gonna be different sizes, all right? And it's inverse. So if, I, if moment of inertia goes up, omega goes down. If moment of inertia decreases, omega goes up. And that's the ice skater effect. So, um, and that was our first demonstration. Now let me pause for questions. Yes. Repeat your question. If moment of inertia decreases in size, then omega has to increase in size. Because the, the product of the two has to stay level, the same amount, okay? So here's an example. You ready? If I double the moment of inertia, omega has to go, has to be cut in half okay if i triple the moment of inertia omega has to be cut in a th to to one third of its original size okay. and then if you it, and that's how um the ice skater you know so when she increases her arms out here oh, that means mr squared is bigger and the moment of inertia is bigger and so the spin rate is smaller she slows down a little bit. Another question. Deshonda, do you have a question? Go. Got it? All right. Any other questions? Yes, Brittany. No, it, it, the angular, the direction of the, uh, we tried it in both directions. So we tried it with some of this and we tried it with some of this. So, but either way, you know, if you're just talking about the angular speed, you know, how many RPMs, you know, then you can see it. 
you know whether and if you if you want to specify clockwise or counterclockwise then you have to you know but we're just talking about rpms you know, so that's like the speedometer rating by the way uh raise your hand if you have a device that measures rpm raise your hand if you you see no you i know i already told you the answer in office hours yesterday so who has a device that measures rpms what do you have lauren a cat eye yeah and that tells you the rpm is that right? So your bicycle, your calculator on your bike yeah. tells you the RPMs. Yeah. Why do you need to use RPMs? So wheel RPMs. I don't know anything anymore. But it reads out the R it reads out the speed too, MPH. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Anybody else got an RPM device? I bet you do. Okay. In your car? Yeah, that's yeah, that's it. The tachometer. Every a lot of people have a tachometer. Okay, that's that's what you. It's off kind of on the left side of the the display. Anyways, yeah, mo, a lot of you guys will have now. If you have an older car or a beater that is not so f maybe so fancy, but you know what else is a good RPM uh, measuring device? Your ear. You know, if you have a car with a stick shift, raise your hand if you if you know how to drive stick shift. Oh man, that is pathetic. You guys are all that is like five of you. The rest of you, well, in in a stick shift, one of the things you can do is listen to the en the pitch of the engine. You know, and the pit the pitch of the engine, when it goes up, it go it rises. And then when you shift, it goes back down, you know, to a lower frequency sound, a lower pitch, and a lower RPM rate. Connor, can you drive a stick? Well, motorcycle, if you can ride a motorcycle, you can drive a stick if, if you have, but not mine. I'm not going to let you drive mine. <laughs> but, you know, a, a motorcycle is a... Isn't it a motorcycle? I don't really know. Do, they, do motorcycles have automatic? Uh, you, you, do they? I bet they're expensive. Yeah. Yeah, so a motorcycle, you got a, you got a clutch, right? If you can operate a clutch on a motorcycle, it just takes about five minutes to figure it out on a car. Really? That's interesting. So it's almost an automatic. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's work on the second demonstration. So we're going to do a little bit of delta L considerations here. And so this one, I'm going to go straight to the question. And this one's multiple choice as well. And what I want you to do is remember if you can, what you saw for Collet. Okay? The student is initially at rest. It takes a wheel that's initially positive 20. So we're, ta we're taking positive upward. And then he flips it. So now it's the same amount of angular momentum, but it's downward. So a minus 20. So how much delta L does the student acquire? Okay, so you got a bunch of possibilities here. Because remember, angular momentum has to be conserved. So what the bicycle wheel acquires 
Khalid also acquires, but just the opposite direction. And I can tell that many brains are burning on this one. That's all right. We're going to explain this question. I see hands going all over the place here. Right hand. And I'm sorry my diagram is maybe not so hot, but Austin, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Good gravy. Negative, positive. Think about the box cars. Think about the skateboarders. But now you're thinking angular momentum, not linear momentum, translational momentum. You're thinking angular momentum, spin angular momentum. I'm looking at somebody over on the other side. He's going like this, and it's good. Good. 45 seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Let me show you the distribution of answers here. There's the distribution of answers. So everybody, so 70% of you voted for A, but you are wrong. Only six people. Raise your hand if you voted for C. Only C. All right. Good. Now, let's figure this out. Here we go. If you, if you look at this one, LFW minus LIW is negative 20 minus regular 20. So here it is. Here's delta L of the wheel. Okay, so LIW initial, get my cursor over here, here in parentheses on my second equation block is um, the initial angular momentum of the wheel. It was going upward like, you know, he had to, you know, whatever the bicycle wheel had, say it was 20. And when he flips it exactly the other direction, he gets it to minus 20. So it's a, it's a spin flip. And the delta angular momentum for the wheel is negative 40 kilogram meter squared per second. So that's what the student has to get. 
positive. So his spin is now positive 40 kilogram meters squared per second. All right. So the student. So here it is again. So you guys are thinking that if you answered 20 A, that would add up the, that would add up to zero angular momentum, but that's not what you have. You have to have a positive, you know, the total has to be positive 20 because he started at rest. He starts with zero angular momentum. So he can't, if he gets 20 and the other one has a minus 20, that's zero. But, but that's not the total angular momentum at the start. The total is the student plus the wheel. So positive 20. So for him to get, for the total system to be positive 20, you have minus 20 for the wheel and positive uh, 40 for the, uh, for the student. And here's the calculation again. All right. Question. Uh, that's every interaction that you did can be modeled in this way, except the second one when you st went really fast. I remember I, st I gave you the wheel and then I spun you up a little bit. That's the one that. You know, and that, but that's not this. The problem in the screen is he starts from goose eggs. But we don't. We could have done it, you know, with some initial angular momentum. So the student wheel demonstration plus or minus delta L. You know what? That's similar to skateboarders pushing off, except for skateboarders, it's translational momentum, plus or minus delta P. But whatever you know, the person. Uh, Whatever Angelica gets, uh, who was who was uh, skating with Angelica? Was it it was? What is your name again? Logan. Logan. So whatever Logan gets, Angelica gets the opposite. Same thing here, but with angular momentum. All right. Now here's a little table, and you can jot these down if you like. Um, the difference between or the similar concepts for translational and rotational. Translational is from A to B, from Miami to Orlando. Rotational is, you know, spinning around on the stool up in the front of the lecture hall. Regular momentum P equals MV, angular momentum I omega. So there's a there's kind of an, a moment of inertia, I, and a speed, omega. Same as M over here in the momentum formula, that measures the inertia of, not the moment of inertia, but just the inertia of an object. Newton's second law, F equals delta P over delta T. You know, we've done that before. The change in the mo translational momentum, the linear momentum, comes by way of a force, a net force. And similarly over here, the torque tau is delta L over delta T. All right, so the rotational analog of Newton's second law is right over here. And it looks very, if you, if you phrase it in terms Whoa, I just dropped my microphone. Hold on a second. If you, uh, if you phrase it in terms of uh, angular momentum and stuff, it looks just the same. Now, here's the cool one, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy for an object, you know, m with mass m traveling at speed v, one half mv squared. We've done that. But you know what it works out? And, and I was thinking about giving you a little derivation of it today. 
you know, with, with pixels and stuff. Uh, but there wasn't enough time. But the, the, the kinetic energy for something spinning is one half I omega squared. So it's a perfect analog. It's a perfect analogy. It's really slick. All right. Now it is rotation uh, instead of translation. And you know what? Um, these two The difference between translation and rotation is important. Now, these are spatial rotations that we're talking about. Bicycle wheel, ice skater. Einstein's theory of relativity All the cool effects come from treating time as the fourth dimension. Spatial rotations in the theory of relativity, x, y, and z, they are all fine. If you treat time as another dimension, you know, so the x, spatial dimension and T, the temporal dimension. All of the cool effects of the theory of relativity come from thinking of a space-time rotation. In other words, a rotation across time. So a space-time rotation. And X, Y, you know, so this is all, you know, all the stuff that we've been doing today you know, is rotation in the XY plane, you know, two spatial dimensions. But if you went into the XT plane and do a rotation, you get all the cool things in the special theory of relativity. It's really cool. And uh, now, uh, so these analogs, rotation and stuff, it's a lot to think about. You know, we're you know, we think about it because we see it every day, but to think about it in the terms that Einstein did is, uh, is very fruitful, very productive. Now, after exam two, we're going to start talking about chapter six. So uh, do not read chapter six yet, but after the exam, this will be your assignment. Start reading in chapter six. All right. Now you're dismissed, and I'll see you on Tuesday. If you want to talk to me about anything, we have a few minutes. Come on up here to the front.